Take your Bible and turn to Exodus 20. Exodus chapter 20. It's where we're going to start. Now I'm down here today. Because I'm going to be in with you today. We'll call this the pit. And I'm down here in the pit with you, alright? Exodus chapter 20. What's in Exodus 20? Ten Commandments. God laid this on my heart earlier this week, would not let me go away from it. And um, as usual, when I go through the scriptures and looking at the words in the scriptures and how they're used, you always learn something. And I learned some things in putting this. This is not, I am not going to be able to preach all this in one Sunday. So um, I'll be mindful of the time when I think God's done talking, then we'll cut it and we'll move on. We'll deal with the rest of it maybe next Sunday or the following Sunday. But it's one of those things that I think we need to bring it up. I think we need to talk about it. And I think we need to, um, if there's anything that I've asked you people in this church, is that you be honest, okay? Uh, I've said this before, that sitting here in this congregation and watching online, I know some of the people, they've shared their past with me. We have drunkards, we have adulterers, uh, we have people who've just lived lascivious lifestyles, we have drug addicts, we have thieves, we have murderers, uh, covetous people, liars. I mean, we have all kinds of people. That's what church is for. Church is a hospital. It's not, you don't go to the hospital if you ain't sick. Okay? You come to the hospital because there's something wrong with you and you need the physician to bring healing to you. But, if I go to the doctor and he finds something seriously wrong with me, I don't want him to lie to me. I want him to tell me the truth. Don't make me think that everything's okay when it's not okay. That's what church has to be like from time to time. Every now and then we go to the doctor for a checkup. The doctor says, you, everything looks pretty good. You've been doing good. Okay? And so every now and then I'll deliver sermons. I'll tell you, hey, you're doing, doing pretty good. But there's always a an issue that creeps up in our lives physically and there's always something that creeps up in our lives spiritually. So notice if you look up on the screen, I want to go through these verses very quickly because if I don't, I'll never get to the message. I just, I'm using this sort of as a, I'm getting into the message. Romans 12, 17, recompense to no man evil for evil. You know what that means? Don't pay them back bad for something good that they did. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Provide things honest in the sight of all men. Somebody everywhere you go is watching you. Your home, where you work, where you go to the store, the grocery store, people know you. My wife has her favorite checkout lady at Walmart. And when she is done with her shopping at Walmart, she looks to that one lady and says, "That's even if I have to wait, I like her. And that checkout lady knows my wife. She knows she's going to have coupons. She knows this. You know, so they get along with each other. But other than that, they don't know each other. But we're supposed to be honest, even dealing with people that we don't know. So it says, honest in the sight of all men. Romans 13, 13, let us walk honestly as in the day. You know what that means? The sun is shining on everything that you do. Pretend like even, watch this, even when you're alone, pretend like everybody's watching. Not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envying. 2 Corinthians 8, 21, providing for honest things, not only in the sight of the Lord, but also in the sight of men. Amen? Amen. 
2 Corinthians 13, 7. Now I pray to God that you do no evil. Not that we should appear approved, but that you should do that which is honest, though we be as reprobates. 1 Thessalonians 4, 12. That you may walk honestly toward them that are without. That means outside the church wall. And that you may have lack of nothing. Walk honestly outside this church. You come here. You admit that you're a sinner. Do the same thing out here. 1 Timothy 2, 2. For kings, that we're supposed to pray for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet a peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. Hebrews 13, 18. So did it fix it? Do I look good now? Okay. Sometimes I think they got it turned upside down just to make a fool out of me. Hebrews 13, 18, pray for us, for we trust we have a good conscience in all things willing to live honestly. 1 Peter 2, 12, having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. You know what conversation is? How you converse with people, and it doesn't mean just how you talk to them, because your actions speak, don't they? So church members going around saying, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, but they're just the same kind of drunk as everybody else is, and everybody knows it. So having your conversation honest among the Gentiles, that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they may by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. They're not going to glorify God now. But in the day when God visits this world, I believe that the world is going to see God's church glorified on that day. Because we're going to meet Jesus in the air, and we're going to be with him. And I think the world's going to see that. So every one of these verses, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight verses that deal with our life and how we are to be honest. Can you lie to God? Do, well, do people lie to God? Ask it different. Do people lie to their friends? Do people lie... Do parents lie to their children? The, the reverse of that, I won't even have to ask. Do husbands lie to their wives? Do wives lie to their husbands? Do church people lie to each other? Do people lie to themselves? To me, that's the worst kind. You lie to yourself, you're never going to get help. Amen? When you're addicted to drugs, you lie to yourself by telling yourself, I'm not addicted. You lie to yourself by telling yourself, I don't need help. You lie to yourself by telling yourself, I'm not hurting anybody with what I do. And those are all lies. And you lie to yourself, and you believe your own lies, knowing that you... See, it kind of sounds silly, right? Lying to yourself. But people do it all the time, and then they believe the very lies that they themselves came up with. Happens all the time. It happens with just about everybody. So, guess what I'm going to talk about? Exodus 20, verse 16. Thou shalt... Not Say this out loud with me. Let's read it out loud together. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Now, I used to think that that didn't necessarily mean lie because it was just to your neighbor, right? But I actually found a verse in the Bible where it defines bearing false witness as lying. So they're the same thing. So let's go to the Lord in prayer, and then um, I've got some verses to read, and then I'm going to ask you some questions. And I want you to be praying about this and thinking about this. Why do we lie? Why do we lie? What are the reasons why we would say something that is not true to somebody? Okay, why would we do that? Father in heaven... Lord, I did not 
want to preach this. But Lord, you wouldn't let me get away from it. I thank, Father, that you are wanting to remind all of us, and me included, that honesty is not only a good policy, it's the best. And Father, if, if we do nothing else, and Lord, we do thank you for your grace, your grace is what allowed us to be here today, because all of us have lied. But Father, if you do nothing more than just make us mindful of how often we lie. Make us aware of it. Show us, God, what only you can show us because you're the only one who knows what's on the inside of us. We are deceitful people. A lot of things we do is in deceit, deceiving others. So, Father, we just pray, God, that you would just make us aware of just how often we lie and the reasons why we lie. And, Father, in doing that, you would help us, Father, to start learning how to tell the truth because that's what your word, eight verses, Father, that you gave us that teach us to be honest everywhere we go. Even if we meet somebody one time only, we're to be honest to them, in front of them. So Lord, help me preach this as someone, Father, that is going to be found guilty of just about everything that I preach in this series. Because if there's a lie out there, chances are I've told it. And I hate that about myself. God, I hate it. And I want to do better. And I want to be honest. So, Father, just help us, Lord, to be mindful of the truth. So we thank you for this. Lord God, just teach us your ways. This Bible is our instruction in righteousness because we don't know how to be righteous. We don't know how to be right. And we have to be instructed in it. So, God, teach us your ways. Thank you, Father, for not lying to us. Thank you, Jesus, for telling us the truth, because we needed to hear it. So bless your word today, we pray in Jesus' name, and all of God's people said. Amen. Revelation 22, he said, the commandment said, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. And so in Revelation 22, I want you to notice, verse 14, the people who are not allowed into heaven... Blessed are they that do his commandments. You got that? Blessed are they that do his commandments. That they may have right to the tree of life. And may enter in through the gates unto the sit, into the city. For without our dogs. That's where that came from. If you've ever seen a sign that said no dogs allowed. It was in heaven first. Which really burns some people. Because they think their dogs are going to heaven with them. For without our dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and who's, watch this now, look at this, look at that verse, whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. You see that? That involves two types of people, those who lie and those who love lies. Let me give you an example of that. What people want nowadays, I guess, it's, I guess this goes on forever, but what people want is a church that will lie to them. They want a preacher that will lie to them. What they want to hear is, oh, of course you're going to heaven. You can be an adulterer. You can be on your fifth husband. You can be a, a fornicator. You can be a sodomite. You can be a, a beer guzzler. God loves everybody. God's not going to send you to hell. God loves you. And you're going to go to heaven even though you're still doing what you're doing. 
That's what people, they, they love lies. They do not want people telling them the truth about them. They want people to tell them that they look nice. They want people to tell them that they like being in their presence. They want people to tell them lies. So they are the ones who love a lie. I know I've got this in my notes somewhere, but it, I want to read this verse. Turn to 2 Thessalonians 2. Here's what happens to those who love lies. To those that love lies. Verse 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and what kind of wonders? Lying wonders. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Does sin lie? Sure it does. There's a song by, who is it? Barbara Mandrell. If loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. You know what that is? That's a song about adultery. It is her in another man's bed who's got a wife, she's got a husband, and if loving him is wrong, then she don't want to be right. Her sin is telling her lie. There's, other, there's all kinds of songs. Uh, it, how can this be wrong if it feels so right? That is someone loving the lie that they're with somebody that they shouldn't be with. And they love the lie. That's what that means. Deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Because they receive not what? The love of the truth. And back here in Revelation 22, whosoever loveth a lie. So the people that are not allowed in New Jerusalem are the people who do not love the truth. They love the lie. And because they don't love the truth, verse 10, they, that they might be saved for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Because people would rather believe a lie than to be, than to admit the truth. Amen? If people told the truth, we would not need courts in this world. Police would come to your door. Did you do that? Yeah. Come with me. We're going to lock you up for 90 days. Okay. We would not need a court for that. We would not need witnesses for that. If people would tell the truth, we wouldn't need most of the laws that we have now to govern our conduct simply because we will not tell the truth. I got to think about this the other day. Most ball games are based upon team deception. In football, American football, for those of you who don't know what, and I don't know why we call it football, because we almost never kick it. But in football, one team gets in a huddle, and they're even giving little codes to one another, and what they're going to do is, they got 11 players, and only one of them is going to carry the ball, and the other 10 are supposed to deceive and trick the other team. It's the same thing as done in baseball. You look and see the manager, and he's going... What is that? One of those signs, one of those signs is telling the runner on first base to either steal or not steal. The other five signs are meant to mislead the other team. Catcher who's catching the ball is using his fingers to give signals to the pitcher. And he is hiding that in secrecy because he does not want the other team to know what the pitcher is going to throw. Every now and then... A team will get caught having somebody in the outfield spying on the catcher and sending the signals in. They've caught people doing that. But it's based upon lies. Romans, uh, I didn't finish this. For this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. And I'm telling you right now, people, your internet is full of lies. And I am stunned. At the number of people in this world who actually believe those lies. I'm stunned at the volume of people who believe lies. 
versus the ones who only want to know the truth. I'm stunned at that. Romans 3, verse 4, God forbid, yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. As it, so you know what that means? I'm a liar. You're a liar. He's a liar. She's a liar. Wouldn't you like to be a liar too? God and His Word is the only thing that's right. And I hate about myself, I hate lying. I cannot stand up here and preach messages on lying if I'm going to lie about myself. So do I tell lies? Yeah. I don't like it. I don't want to. But I have told lies before. And I'm not happy with myself over it. Okay? So consider that. Proverbs 6, verse 16. Turn your Bible there. Just, I'm just, my goodness. Give me a little time this morning, okay? I mean, I, mean, I can cut this off anywhere, but just give me a little time. And I, I want you to be thinking now of why people lie. Proverbs six sixteen. These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination to him. So a proud look, a lying tongue. I forgot that, I didn't underline that. But a lying tongue, God hates it. It's an abomination to him. Hands that shed innocent blood. Heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. You know what an imagination is? It's a lie about what you want. It's a lie about the future. You know what people do with their brains? They fantasize. They fantasize about being with other people called lust covetousness and we invent these scenarios in our minds and it's all a lie wicked imaginations feet that be swift in running to mischief a false witness that speaketh lies god says it's an abomination to him and he that soweth discord among brethren usually discord is a very subtly wrapped lie usually it is Proverbs 12, 17, He that speaketh truth showeth forth righteousness, but a false witness, deceit. A faithful witness, Proverbs 14, 5, A faithful witness will not lie, but a false witness will utter lies. Now I want you to get this scenario. You're talking to somebody, and you catch them in a lie. You catch them in a lie. Whether it's your spouse, or your children, or your friends, or your pastor, or a church member, or whoever it is. You catch them in a lie. So your mind has now come to the conclusion, this person is capable of lying to me. So what, what is that in your mind? Are you unjustly judging them, thinking that they might lie to you twice? I don't think so. I don't think it's unjust at all to think that if somebody lied to you, looking you in the eye, I don't think it's wrong at all to consider the fact that they would probably lie to you again. So what does that do to somebody's reputation? It makes them uncredible. Uncredible. It's tough to get over that. Now there's also the grace that I think we'd like to have with people, considering, yeah, people make mistakes and people say things they probably shouldn't have said. And you can get past that and pray for them because you know that you're just as capable of doing that as anybody else is. So Proverbs 12 said, oh, I already read all that. A false witness will utter lies. Once you've got it in your mind that somebody will lie to you, it's hard to get that out. And you build a reputation with what you do with your mouth. 
You, you may not like it. You know what we do? You know how we do? We get into it with somebody, and somebody says, well, you didn't, you didn't tell me the truth, and you get all blistered up. You call me a liar? You call me a liar? See, that's pride, right? Well, I'm not a liar. Did you lie? Yeah, you're a liar. If you lied, you're a liar. And once you build that reputation for yourself, it is hard to undo that. Not impossible, but it's hard. Proverbs 21, 28, a false witness shall perish. God's not going to let you, God's not going to let you live. God's not going to let you thrive. God's not going to let you prosper. Proverbs 25, 18, a man that beareth false witness against his neighbor is a maul. What is a maul? Jared, what is a maul? Split wood. A maul, watch this. So you know what that means, right? Someone who lies divides people. So think about it. The devil hates Bethel Church. And he'd love to get us all hot and mad at each other. So he'll work on whoever he... I mean, if he'll work on me, he'll work on you. He doesn't care. But what he wants, he wants lies to divide his house up. And he that bears the false witness against his neighbor is a maul. You split people up. Husbands and wives split up because one of them finds out the other one's been lying to them. Divorces all over the country based only upon lies. This Bible's right. God knows your heart, and God wrote every aspect of your heart down in this Bible. Matthew 15, verse 18. Those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart. Did you hear that? And they defile the man. And see, this is where he's talking about it's not what goes in you. Who had bacon and ham for breakfast this morning or pork sausage? Raise your hand. One of you? What's wrong with this church? Two of you. What's wrong with this church? We need more bacon. Amen? Bacon is pork. That's unclean. In the Old Testament, they weren't allowed to eat that. But thank God he cleaned it up. Amen? And people are worried about what they eat because that might defile them. But you're not worried about what comes out of you. And Jesus said, that's what's defiling you. Where does vomit come out at? They defile the man. From out of the heart proceed evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, fornications, thefts, false witness. See, it comes out of your heart. Your heart is what dictates your actions. Blasphemies. These are things which defile a man, but to eat with unwashed hands. I've eaten with unwashed hands probably the most time I eat. But it's a false witness. It's a lie. That's what defiles you. Romans 13, 9, for this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. Watch this now. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. When you purposely lie, and there is a difference between a, a, an accidental lie, sometimes we may not have facts straight, sometimes we misspeak, sometimes, you know, we meant to tell the truth, but... Our old self kicked in, and, and, and you, can, you, can, you can apologize. You know what? Let me back up on that. I did not mean to say that. Let me tell you the truth, okay? But when you purposely lie to somebody, it is the Bible is saying you love you more than you love them. You love yourself. Why do husbands cover up adulterous affairs? Because they love them more than they love their wife. Why do people cheat on their time card at work? Why do they call and say, hey, clock in for me? Where are you? I'm just getting out of bed. I'm hungover. Clock in for me. Why would people do that? Because they love themselves more than they love their neighbor. Their neighbor is the people they work with, and their neighbor is their boss. They, they're a servant to a company, but they love themselves more than they love that company. 
And if you, that's biblical, by the way. That is biblical. You're a servant of God, are you not? If you don't love God more than yourself, you're not a good servant. So every lie, purposeful lie that you tell is because you have put yourself in front of everybody else in this world. And you are seeking your own benefit instead of the benefit of somebody else. Why do people steal? Same reason. They'll steal because they seek their own benefit over somebody else's. And if somebody else has loss, I don't care. I got what I wanted. So it's the same thing with lying. You are after your own benefit. So you lie. Doesn't matter if somebody else loses. You benefit and you love yourself more than you love them. What is the one rule for us husbands in the Bible? What is that rule? Huh? Husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church. For he that loveth his wife, or he that loveth him, his body loveth his wife. You love your wife? Then be honest with you and you say, but I don't want her to find out what I did. Then quit doing that stuff. Oh, it's, it's simple. But we're guilty of it. We're guilty of it. So tell me why. Let's see if I'm there yet. Then what? Hang on to that. I'm going to deal with this, and I think I'm going to cut the baloney off right here. Okay? Turn in your Bible to Psalm 44, 1 Samuel 15. I want you to open your Bible up to these places. Mm, 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 mm. I'm going to preach this, and I'm going to let you go. Now, keep in mind, I'm down here. Because I'm just, I think I'm just primarily teaching. And it's because I'm right here with you on this issue. I would ask you to raise your hand if you told lies, but there might be somebody who lied about it. <laughs> Psalm 44, 17. Took, when I thought about this, Saul, King Saul's first person I thought of. Psalm 44, 17. All this is come up, come upon us, yet have we not forgotten thee, neither have we dealt falsely in thy covenant. Our heart is not turned back, neither have our steps declined from thy way. Think of the covenant now. The covenant that God has made with each and every person in this room. Young people, listen to me now. Hey, you kids, you, you're the liars here. You're the, one, you're the ones that haven't been whipped enough yet for lying. So I want you young people listening to me. The covenant that God has made with us is, For by grace are ye saved through faith. Not of, not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. So the covenant is, God offers us salvation by His grace through our faith. So God covenant is. God made a promise. That he would always have grace on us. If we did one thing. And that is. Always believe. We believe what God said. And I thought about that. And, and Saul. King Saul. Was the one I thought of. Because you know what he did. Two things he did. Number one, he broke the covenant, the commandment that God made with him. He broke it. But what he did after that was worse than what he did first. And I'll show it to you. 1 Samuel 15, are you there? 1 Samuel 15. I'm going to give you about eight seconds. Here we go, 1 Samuel 15, 18. And the Lord sent, this is Samuel talking to Saul. Samuel's caught Saul in a lie. 
or he's fixing to catch him in a lie. The Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners, the Amalekites, and fight against them until they be consumed. So the commandment to Saul was, When you meet the Amalekites, I'm going to give you the power to defeat every single one of them. I want every man, woman, child, and the king. I want it all destroyed. I want all their cattle destroyed. I want everything destroyed. He said, Utterly destroy them. So that there is nothing with a beating heart inside that city. Very clear. What did Saul do? Most of what God said. But he didn't do all of it. He left the king alive. Then his eyes started looking on all that sheep. And he brought back all the sheep and goats that they had and all the cattle. And then he offered some of it up to God. It's a lie. So verse 19. Wherefore then didst, not, didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord? Why did you not obey the voice of the Lord? Is what he's saying. But didst fly upon the spoil and didst evil in the sight of the Lord. You saw that stuff, Saul. You saw it. You wanted it. And you stole it. You took it. And God told you to destroy it. And you didn't do it. Now look at what. So that was Saul's first sin. Look at verse 20. Look at what Saul said. Saul said to Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. You liar. You liar. Watch this. Saul did something wrong. Raise your hand if you've ever done something wrong. Now, stand up and tell us what you did if, you're gonna, if you lied about it. No, don't do that. Doing something wrong is common among us sinners. Lying about it gets you nowhere. Yes, sir. We've got a really good example of just this thing this week with that football player. NFL team didn't play that. He was uh, uh, throughout the year, he had a couple disciplinary problems, beating up his girlfriend and stuff. The team and the league were giving him mercy, but they found out he lied to them. Gotcha. Video for it. Cut him that day. Bill Clinton. There was a a documentary on A&E. I watched it about Bill Clinton and what he did. He, this man's adulterer big time. He's going to burn in hell for eternity. His adulteries are everywhere. He's a rapist, an adulterer, the man is sick. But then they got him twice now. I, went, I watched the history of that and the timeline. Twice under oath, they asked him point blank. He even had a sheet of paper agreed to by both sides of the lawyers that said what sexual con conduct is. Every little thing that in what was part of that, and he had it in front of him. And when they asked him, have you had any sexual contact with Monica Lewinsky twice, knowing what the list said, he said no. Twice under oath. And that's why we should have thrown him out. But we got gutless, spineless congressmen. But anyway, here's the deal. Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. He lied. He lied, and he lied, he lied to himself. He lied to Samuel. He lied, Samuel's the Bible. Samuel is the Word of God. And he lied to his Bible. And his Bible knows everything there is to know about you. And in doing so, he lied to God. And I'm saying, it, that verse says, We have not dealt falsely in thy covenant. And here's the thing, if you are a sinner, admit it, you're a sinner. Amen. I am not for this salvation process that says, do you love Jesus? Wouldn't you like to have a relationship with Jesus? Don't you want to be in love with Jesus? Come on, and that's it. No, 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 no. Admit your guilt. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. If you will not confess them, you cannot be forgiven of them. Now, I know it's not possible to remember every stupid thing that you've ever done your whole life. There isn't. Listen, you spent a lifetime sinning. You'd have to spend another lifetime telling about it. This is not possible. But at least admit to God and man, you've done terrible things. And even when Bill Clinton got in front of the camera before the American public, 
He smoothed his language over so as not to confess what he did. He's still lying. To this day, he's a liar. So is that Jezebel wife of his. I'm just saying to you, you, you can deal falsely in the covenant with God by not admitting your sins. You don't trust God. You trust you. And there's an aspect to lying, and I'm going to get into in a later message. But one of the reasons why we lie is to cover our sins. And here you have a faithful God who sent His only begotten Son as a soldier to fight for you and died for you. Every flag-draped coffin that comes into this country, we ought to all stand and give our salute. Amen? And here's Christ, the greatest one of them. And all you can do is lie about your sins. You're, you filthy liar, you. You think you're saved? You're going to burn in the lake of fire. Liars are... It's right. So quit your lying about your sins. Quit lying about them. Quit dealing falsely with the covenant. A loving God says, I'll take your sins and I will forgive them and then I'll act as if they never happened. That's even hard for us to do. When somebody does us wrong, it's hard for us to act like it didn't happen. God can do it just like that. And He's willing to. Stop lying. Quit dealing falsely with the covenant. And remember, you people here and you people online, remember, you're no better than me. You're no better than anybody else. Start being honest. And get honest with God's covenant. If God said it was a sin, confess it. Move on. Let's bow our heads. For that sin, God ascribed rebellion and turned him over to witchcraft. For that sin, God took his Holy Spirit away from Saul and gave him an evil spirit. For that sin, Solomon, on the other hand, spent 40 years sleeping with a thousand women, drinking all the wine, having big parties every night. And God forgave him every one of his sins. And yet, this one thing that Saul did, God said he took his mercy from him. You want God to be merciful to you? Admit you're wrong. You want your husband to be merciful to you? Admit you're wrong. You want your wife to be merciful to you, forgive you? Admit you're wrong. Quit trying to justify your actions, justify your sins, which is a lie. Stop lying about your sins. Admit that you did wrong. To God first. Father in heaven, this Bible is right. And my pride, my ego, my flesh was telling me, Mike, don't, don't admit so much about yourself. But Father, I know, God, how merciful you've been to me. You have forgiven me of everything. And I've been honest with you knowing that I cannot hide my transgressions from you, knowing that your Holy Spirit came to me privately each and every time 
and dealt with me. And I acknowledged my transgressions to thee, like David did. And you forgave me. And it's over with. Father, help these people. Help anybody who listens to this message. Help them. Understand that lying to you and lying to everybody else and lying to themselves, it's not going to get, it's not going to make them free. Bill and Hillary, Father, you know more about them than anybody. And you know what they're guilty of. And they may think they've got away with it. But, Father, they have yet to stand before you. And, Father, there may be somebody in this church that has done wrong, and they think that because time has passed that they got away with it. But, God, you saw everything. And your Holy Spirit has come to them knocking at their door. And they've been holding it back, thinking that it'll just go away. But Father, one thing I know about Saul is that you went away from him. God, I don't want to be like that. And I don't want anybody in my church or anybody in my family to end up like that. I don't want any of these good people online, these good people in Kenya to end up like that. I don't want them, God, to deal falsely with your covenant. So God, to you and to you first, we acknowledge our transgression before you. And the ones that your Holy Spirit is bringing to mind, we're going to get specific about it. Yes, God, we did this thing. God, have mercy on your people the way you promised. And take their sins and cast them into the sea so that they're completely gone. Father, teach us how to always be honest in your covenant and to trust you that you're a merciful God. Father, Lord, lead us into whatever situation, God, as you would have us, to be honest and to not lie. Forgive us, Father, where we have. And help us, Lord, from this day forward to be honest. Father, I ask your blessings now upon your word. And I ask you, Father, Lord, to dismiss these people in your care and your love and your trust. And we pray this in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. When you stand up.